Hey guys, it's Shadow Knight Paladin and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing another digital piece and it's a piece that I really put in a lot of effort and practice. Uh, I'll explain that in a bit. So as you may know, especially the people who have been watching me for quite some time, I'm not very fond of doing backgrounds and I do like details but I really dislike having to color them in. I just like leaving details when they're in the line art phase and I get really sloppy when it comes to coloring them in. So I had a few goals with this particular piece. The first being I wanted to practice ambient lighting and because in, in my usual process I draw the main focus first. For example, usually it's a character or well it's usually a character, a, pers uh, a person. Um, so I usually draw the person first and then the main elements before doing the background. But more experienced artists would know that this isn't super favorable, especially if you, if you have a particular setting or scene in mind. So what happens is that the colors from the background that's supposed to affect the colors in the main focus doesn't really come out because it you added it last and it's in the last in the process so it doesn't really translate or sometimes the pieces in the entire artwork don't look like they belong together because you use different lighting, you use different shading some things don't look like they're in the same color setting I guess so what I wanted to do was change that system of mine so I decided to do the pink to yellow gradient in the background so that's the main color of the background that I wanted to use. So I'll be using yellows for my highlights and adding a little bit of pinks in my uh, shadows and then use a bit of the purple comes from, or violets that come from the hydrangeas also to add to the shadows. So that was the first thing I wanted to learn to make everything look like they're in the same setting. Now the second thing was I wanted to push myself to do details and as you can see the hydrangeas, the flowers are very detailed. I did pretty much all of the petals individually and the leaves. So uh, while I do like doing line art, I had to push myself to color in the flowers and make them look like I actually intended them to look that way. The third was color palettes. Usually, I just make my color palette up as I go along. But this time, I really had in mind what the main color was, and that being the violets from the hydrangeas, and then the green of all of the hydrangeas because they come with leaves, obviously. So, I had to pick a color scheme that would complement that main color without overpowering the hydrangeas, which I want to be the focus of and the person. So, the pink and the yellow were perfect complementary colors for that. They were soft and sweet so they maintained a very um, fantasy-esque light feel to it and the black in the hair, the blue black, is just to create some amount of balance and to ground the entire piece with a darker color and that's also that it won't blend in with the background because if I use blonde it would blend in with the yellow if I use brown it would disappear a bit with the green so using black which is a starker solider color looked just right with all the details going around now the final product or the final output the final drawing you'll see at the end i usually do a preview nowadays so you'll see it there it looks a bit different from what i end with here in the video speed paint that's mainly because my best friend uh, made some comments and she pointed out that some of the highlights or it had it had to do with color and values and I I fixed it like for two days after doing this entire live stream with the speed paint so I didn't I wasn't able to record that process anymore because it was a lot of trial and error and a lot of confusion and a lot of emotions going around so that's, I guess that's the one thing I need to talk about because personally I usually try to be 
more objective and analytical with my pieces. So when someone makes a comment, for example, in class, like if you go to an art school, they'll make comments like, oh, it could have been better if it's like this, or oh, it doesn't really translate, or oh, skill-wise, uh, something, something. And when I was in, when I was taking those classes, when I was a design in, because in my university, there's no like really fine arts, fine arts, there's, there's BFA, fine arts, uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts in graphic in, uh, information design, which is basically graphic design, but you still take like painting and drawing classes to know your composition and shit like that. In all of those classes, in all of my submissions, I did put a lot of hard work in those as well. But I, I was okay when people gave me comments, as I guess I expected it. I expected people to be like super harsh, but to be honest, they weren't. Like people were pretty sweet. Um, so I always accepted their comments and suggestions openly, but for some reason this time, I guess because it was a practice piece and it was something that I felt actually turned out pretty well just by itself, I was a little sensitive when my friend made comments like, oh, something is wrong with the values. And for those who don't understand what it means, honestly, I don't really understand it either. But apparently it means that when you turn the piece into black and white, uh, the, the, the grayness and the blackness and the whiteness of some things should be different and they shouldn't be blending in with each other and that's what's happening now with this piece the leaves and the background and the foreground flowers look the same but they shouldn't be and it's something I haven't really properly learned or I don't know how to go about it and it's something I will strive to learn without blowing a fuse and I'm really sorry to my best friend. We're still friends, don't worry. But I really blew a fuse. And I guess that's another topic I need to talk about real quick. Like, I know it's hard. And I know a lot of YouTubers here say, especially the art critique YouTubers, there is a community for that. The, they go on event art and they make critiques. And that's usually a good thing. And as an artist, it's something to be expected. Uh, all the time, actually. And I know it's hard because you get really sensitive and really attached to your works, but it's there to help you. Most people, most people, okay? Not all. Most people want to help you. And you need to, if you receive a comment that's like against what you believe, or if you're super proud and it makes you feel bad, I would suggest taking a step back and log off for a bit. Do not look at your piece and and come back maybe after a few hours after a day even as long as you want and then try to see where they're coming from that was my mistake when my friend made the comment because like i was still high on the oh shit i finished it i'm so proud of myself and when she made the comment i was like girl i'm that really breaks my heart because i worked so hard and you're just gonna like she didn't really even say anything mean it was just the, it was just the feeling but i did eventually listen to her advice and do what she said even though I didn't really do it exactly like what she said because I couldn't figure it out exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, that's one thing you need to keep in mind. When people give you critiques, especially the ones that are actually worded really well and has actually really factual, has a factual way of putting it and objectively, those people usually mean well. And that's coming from someone who uh, I was part of a organization in college that published artworks and poetry into a book and we did that for for every SAM so there are, there are two SAMs and we do that once a SAM more or less it's, it's a lot more actually and in that system you don't know who submitted the work it could be the person who's also judging the work beside you or it could be someone from the student uh, body and since it was anonymous, it was very objective and people really, really smashed down the piece. Like, does it convey the thing it wants to convey? Is this something new? Is, does it present it in a different way? Is it different? Uh, is this worth publishing? So, I, I should have been the first person not to blow a fuse because I came from that sort of setting. But I guess sometimes even I get the, <laughs> even I lose my cool, so... It, that, if you lose your cool, it's fine. Um, as long as you calm down, apologize, and don't be stubborn headed. If you eventually find out, or if you, if you understand what they're saying, once you've cooled down, it would be best to apologize. Because 
being stubborn about it doesn't really help. And that's what I try to do. I, I try to not be stubborn about it. Okay, I'm, I'm about to run out of time. Um, <laughs> but that's pretty much what I have to say anyway. So, yeah. It's just, just, just take a step back. It's, it's fine to take a step back every now and then. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, please like or subscribe. Maybe even comment. I'd love to talk with you guys about what I just talked about. And follow me on Tumblr, Instagram, DeviantArt. And I'll see you around. Mm-hmm.